Welcome to our lecture online. So we can finally conclude that the Dirac delta function is not actually a function. Well, the reason why we can say that is because it is not defined for all values of x. We know that the, the delta function is equal to 0 for all values of x not equal 0, and it's equal to infinity when x equal to 0. So it's only evaluated at one particular value for x when x equals 0, and at that point it's infinite, so it's either 0, meaning nothing, or infinite for the one value that it has any sort of meaning. So we cannot call that a function. Also, we've realized that the Dirac delta function, we just call it the Dirac delta function because that's its name, it is actually useless by itself. There's just nothing we can do with the Dirac delta function all by itself. But if we then use it to multiply it with another function and put it as an integrate in an integral and it integrated from minus infinity to plus infinity, that by definition, now notice, instead of writing the delta function like this, we write it like this, x minus a, and then you can see that that is equal to the function evaluated at x equals a. In other words, in an integral, multiply with another function and integrate it over negative from negative infinity to positive infinity, it actually gives us the value of that function for a particular value that's indicated in the Dirac delta function x minus a. That means that we then get the value of the function at x equals a. And that's the key for the usefulness of the function. Now again, you may not see that yet at this point, but we'll see sure enough, sure, soon enough, why that is such an important function. Because without it, we could not solve certain types of problems. And so stay tuned, and we'll show you why it is a useful function. Hmm.